Okay, so while I'm in the midst of installing all this electrical stuff, I'm actually gonna rough in the diesel heater. And so you can see I have the plate lined up there. This is kind of where I measured and where I would like the diesel heater to go. So the process will involve I have to drill some holes through the floor. And there's a couple of things I need to consider. There is a the tongue, the members come on an angle, right? And I can go underneath the trailer and you'll see. And I think if I knock on the floor, I think I'm okay here around this area. I don't hear anything solid. You hear the difference there? Solid there. So that's where that cross, that's where that cross member comes through. Yeah, I gotta make sure I clear that. And then I will secure the hoses, the plate, everything to the unit, and then sort of mount the plate with the unit, you know, onto the floor. I think it's gonna be a pretty straightforward process. Hopefully I don't screw anything up. So here we go. Oh, I have a 10 mil right here. Yeah, I remember I had to go out and buy one because I lost them all. I thought I lost this one. This one was in the 11. This is how you win the system. Your 10 millimeter, put it in your 11 millimeter slot because then you won't lose it. I thought I had a reducer in here. Man, what am I doing with my life? Okay, I guess I can just do it with this. I don't think it's very smart, but whatever. Probably the only person that's going to use an impact drill to put the screws in. think about that these screws have a thickness to them of course they do uh, instead of making more bigger holes I'm just gonna router this out that's what I'm gonna do hey you can see I just router out the, these little areas so now Hopefully when I put this down, it sits nice and flush. Oh yeah, there we go. That's perfect now. When you go to install one of these, just make sure that you have enough room for the hose lamp screws, right? And then you're gonna need some room for these bolts, the bolt heads as well. So instead of making one big hole, I tried to limit the hole size to just where the pipes are going through. And then I just routed it out you could chisel out the uh, little notches for the screws here. I'm not too satisfied with this clamp. It keeps skipping on me. So what I'm going to do is actually put, I have some better name brand hose lamps, so I'm going to put that one on. This one, the second there's any actual clamping force, it sort of jumps. 
so I'm going to use these bad boys instead. See, that's a that's on a lot better I'm actually gonna do I'm actually gonna replace this one as well just because I'm really not happy with the quality of the clamps that the unit came with so I'm gonna take these out I want to make sure that when I push this fuel line in that it goes all the way till it contacts the uh, the fuel inlet for inside here I don't want any gap so what I'm going to do is just gonna place my finger about where I need how far I need to push it in. So about that distance there. Right, so I need to make sure that I push it in the mount. Okay, so now I have the air inlet, the fuel line, and the exhaust secured to the heater with the clamps. I'm going to feed these through the hole in the floor. Then I'll be able to actually secure the, the mounting plate to the floor. And now I'll have an exterior to work with and an interior to work with. I have to go bend the exhaust on the outside because it's hidden the floor. Let's go check underneath. Alright, so you see we have the exhaust, the air inlet. Ah! That piece of wood almost killed me. Okay, so you can see the exhaust, the air inlet, and the fuel. Nice in there, and so the exhaust is going to come out to the left, the air inlet is going to go to the right, and the fuel line is going to go to the front here where the fuel tank is going to be mounted. So I'm going to secure the diesel heater to the floor now, then I can work on the plumbing and electrical, I guess. So, yeah. Okay. It's probably easier if you drill a hole first. Oh my god, there we go. Oh! Okay. <laughs> okay, so that's on. So this is the, uh, the air filter. And I'm gonna mount this inside that C-channel. Filthy. Okay, I'm gonna show you how I mounted the air filter. So, you see there's the exhaust going out to the outside of the trailer, and then I have my air intake coming up and behind. And so this is the C-channel that's uh, part of the trailer frame, and so this is now tucked in up behind that, so nothing coming forward from the road and stuff will damage it. I just use some plumber's wire or cable or wrap or whatever you call this stuff and just mount it to the floor and so I have a nice secure placement for the air filter now and I will add like a plate just to protect it. I will definitely add one in the front just to protect any kind of debris coming up and puncturing this intake tube. This is in there nice. So this uh, air filter has two grooves as you can see here and that's nice to add this clamp to keep it in place. And I can still take the front off to service that little air filter. Okay, so I've actually installed a piece of aluminum angle just to protect the exhaust. Just this tip here 
if anything fell on it now it is has a nice protection on both ends if anything hit it it's not going to get caved in i just kind of mount it in the same spot where the in the same self tapper with the uh clamp and so that i think that turned out nice and you know should be okay it's not the nicest looking thing kind of sticks out but the fender will come out to this area and so i'm probably going to tie it in somehow paint it black or you know make it inconspicuous okay the next steps are going to be to mount the fuel tank the filter and the pump i'll have to run the wires up inside and connect to the harness while i'm doing that run the wires to the power source my fuse block and for that i need to have my wiring done so it's just kind of all hopping in tandem right now so moving forward on the diesel heater install I'm going to be mounting the fuel tank and the fuel pump on the outside in the front of the trailer at the tongue and so you can see the fuel line coming here and so the fuel tank and the fuel pump and everything is going to live in this area outside of the trailer so for that i ordered this trailer storage box from princess auto and just on first impressions it's actually a very nice little box it's uh of a high quality plastic for 100 bucks i don't think you can go wrong she fits the tongue perfectly it's chamfered and it, you know it's 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 made for this so there's a locking feature so there's a rubber cover plate and it comes with keys and then there's also some nice brackets or they're not u-bolts but they're threaded rods and plates to install this onto your tongue my only complaint is that you can't take the key out when the lock is in the down position so you always have to have the key on you to open it it's it's actually a good feature because it makes you have to keep locking the box every time you close it um, but you know other than that it's a it's actually a very nice little kit so my plan is that the fuel pump and fuel filter are going to live in this box and then this will also give me space to have my jack stands and other stuff that doesn't need to go inside the trailer um, and then the tank the fuel tank itself is going to get mounted to the back of this box but uh yeah that, i think that's how i'm going to run it so let's get to installing the fuel system so what i'm going to do is i have these two pieces of wood that i cut and i'm going to mount them to the fuel tank like so and then that'll allow me to attach to the back side of the box and have enough spacing so that I can still open up the lid. Okay, so here's the storage unit just sort of sitting on top of the tongue and you can see the fuel tank behind it, nice and mounted, pretty sleek. So yeah, I'm going to work on running the fuel line now, mounting the spigot and then running the fuel to the fuel pump, wires to that and then back into to the diesel heater. Figuring out how to install the spigot, I'm pretty sure this goes inside with a washer rubber washer and then on the outside again there's another little lip with a washer and then I'll probably add some sealant around it just to make sure that it's actually you know watertight so I'm gonna drill my hole I don't know two inches from the bottom on the back corner here and I'm putting it there I'm not putting it right on the bottom because uh, if there's any dirt or debris that get into the tank I don't want to get clogged or lodged into I know there's a fuel filter but I would rather not getting dirt stuck inside the nozzle here and so that's why I'm going to put it up about this mark here oh yeah okay 
so that holds a quarter inch is going to work perfect. It actually allows me to kind of thread the uh, this piece into the plastic. Okay, so I got my little spigot on the end of my wire hanger, and now I'm going to feed it through and try to get it through the hole I made. Wish me luck. I feel like I put it in the one I put it in the one spot that I can't get the hanger to. <laughs> oh I got it. Nice, I got it. So the spigot is now sticking out on the other end. I'm going to add my other end with the washer. I'm just gonna put a little bit of sealant here first. Okay, so the spigot's now installed into the fuel tank. Just a forewarning, don't add sealant like I did because it just creates a big mess. I'm not sure if it's actually gonna help keep it waterproof or not. Um, if you have something better, maybe use that, some Teflon uh, tape or something. Because now I just have a mess and a wrench that I need to clean. The other issue I was having is that while I was tightening this nut, the actual spigot itself was spinning on the inside. So the way I compensated for that is I, I, I just temporarily fitted the piece of rubber tubing on and then I used some vice grips to, to clamp it and hold it. Um, and that just seemed to do the trick. So yeah, spigots so installed, time to do the rest of this stuff. I have the rest of the components to finish installing the fuel system for this diesel heater. What I've done is just added some arrows onto the components so that I know which way the flow is supposed to be mounted. So for example, the fuel filter, which is gonna be mounted between the pump and the tank be mounted like this so you want the fuel to fill the space and then go through the basket you're going to run some fuel line into the box then from the wall of the box to this fuel filter then from the fuel filter it's going to go to the bottom edge of my fuel pump which i'm going to mount on a 15 to 30 degree angle, an upward angle. That's what you need so that the fuel pump doesn't develop air bubbles and wear out prematurely. And the direction of flow is towards the wiring harness. And then from there, it's gonna go to the diesel heater itself. Yeah, I'm just gonna plumb this up. Okay, so I'm just looking at the wiring harness right now. So this is the plug that gets plugged into the heater itself. And then from that, there's these red and black. This goes to the power source, these two here. 
Additional black one here is going to the controller. This fourth line goes to the fuel pump. Now, I wish I sort of thought about this sooner. I'm gonna have to cut this and splice it back together. Wire already has the connector head installed and it's already wired to the clip that gets plugged into the heater. And I could try and unpin it and all that, but I don't wanna get into a mess that I can't fix. So what essentially what I'm gonna do is just kinda cut it at a certain point, feed my wires through, cause I have to drill a hole through the trailer and then through the little uh, box as well. And then I'll just splice it back together once I have everything installed. All right, so I've managed to strip the wire tape down about four inches. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut the wire about an inch away here. That allow me to run obviously the cut end through the holes that, uh, through the hole of the trailer and through the hole of the box. And then I'll crimp it back together to the end with the terminal and then that can get plugged into the fuel pump. No going back from that. So I apologize for the harsh lighting, I don't have anything better, but essentially I have everything up front here installed now. The storage box is now mounted with the through bolts. The fuel tank is mounted to the box, and then I run my fuel line and my power line, my fuel pump line to the box. And I actually use these little sticky cable clips to keep everything organized. That worked really nice. And you can see in there, so I have the line coming in from the fuel tank to the fuel filter and then from the fuel filter running to the fuel pump, which is mounted on an angle, and then from the fuel pump back out to the diesel heater underneath. Okay, so the diesel heater is now installed. All I have to do, hook it up to my power source, but I'm gonna do that once I have all my wiring done. But I've gone ahead and ran the wires up, over and connected them to the fuse panel. I don't have a fuse in it yet because obviously I don't have power. So for safety, I installed a sort of master switch because I don't really trust this thing for drawing power when it's you know, technically off. I actually wired this thing directly to my fuse block and the light for the fuse came on, indicating that I was trying to draw power with nothing being on. And so I just added this as a precaution like everything's connected, but nothing should be drawing power. Yeah, and you can see that light came on. So for some reason, even though this thing is turned off, I don't even have the controller hooked up, something somewhere is drawing power. So that's why I've installed that extra little switch, J just to limit my diesel heater from drawing any power when it's not even being used. It's doing something. So I just finished priming the system. There's a ton of videos online on how to do this. The instructions are actually very terrible to follow and weren't even right for this actual controller. It said to press the arrow key, side arrow key and okay. My remote only has up and down. I had to press the settings button and an arrow key to run the primer. But so right now I just pressed okay and turned it on and you can hear the heater running. And so the glow plug is just warming up right now. So it's pulling about nine amps right now. And that's just to get it started. I can feel some cold air coming through the heater. So it's just sort of setting up. It hasn't started combusting anything yet. The You don't even hear the fuel pump going on right now. This is exciting. This is the first startup. Having the pump set up remotely outside, I, can, I can't even hear it on, inside the trailer, which is awesome. So it's still humming away doing a warm-up sequence there she goes starting to hum away now and I can start feeling some heat Dude, the heaters working this is awesome so I have the door open now here there's the exhaust going pumping away Currently set to 22 degrees Celsius. 
apparently 20 in here. I just closed the door and wow, it's ever warm in here already. This thing is awesome. I'll tell you right now, it does not take long to heat the space. <laughs> now the heater has reached the desired temperature and is actually slowing down now. Upon startup, this thing uses about 10 amps to get the glow plug going. Once the heater is running, it goes on high until it reaches a desired temperature. So that'll draw around 3 to 3.5 amps. Once it reaches temperature, it's on low now. And wow, it's uh, drawing less than an amp. Wow, that's awesome. And it's like toasty warm in here. Like I could be in a t-shirt. Oh, this is exciting. This is, this is very exciting. Cool. All right, well, thanks for tuning in. Hopefully the next time you see me, I'm out on the lake fishing.